Hi, I'm Jen Onlock, Education Programs Manager at Latchmart Centre. Welcome to our first Latcham Saturdays virtual edition. These events are free programming for the community to encourage creativity, engagement and fun. They are generously supported by the family of Catherine Ann Courtney. For today's event, we will be creating a Mandela-inspired piece. You can keep it simple or make it as intricate as you like, depending on age and interest. The idea is to use basic materials that most people have at home, so there are as few barriers to participation as possible. It also encourages you to be creative and look at household items as art supplies. You'll need paper or cardboard that will be cut into a circle, a variety of pasta shapes or dried legumes, and glue for the basic design. So let's get started here. We we can use any type of paper. Uh, I've chosen blue for this one because the first demo um, is going to be just using the plain uh, pasta and not colorizing it later on. Um, this might be good for um, people that just want to quickly try this or kids that um, wouldn't be interested in, in taking too long. You can use paper, you can use cardboard, whatever you have at home on hand. And I use bowls, plates, cups, glasses, whatever I have around the house to make the sized um, circle I want. We're going to trace it around and then you're going to cut it out. So for this one, I'm using um, just a regular printer's uh, weight paper. Um, the reason being as well is that um, we're going to use some folds in it to create lines to follow when we're creating our pattern. If you use cardboard, obviously, you're going to have to just use a um, ruler and pencil and um, make some segments that way. Uh, this is the easiest way to um, get those lines in there for guidance once you start gluing on your pasta or legumes. So we're just going to cut that out and there you go. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and so now what we want to do is fold that circle in half so we kind of get a center line down the center of the circle. And I'm not creasing it and, and pressing too hard so it doesn't make too big a crease but enough that I can see it. Then I'm going to fold it in half again so quarters Kind of makes a uh, cone shape there and just gently fold it and then fold it one more time so um, that I have some guidelines for when I'm gluing. It just makes it um, a lot easier to evenly distribute. Um, if the kids don't want to do this and you just want to just quickly draw an X through it and then an X through that, that's totally fine too. That's just a quick easy way to get those lines. If you can't see those well enough, um, you can always trace over those with a ruler and pencil. If you are the type of person that really wants to see those clearly, um, this will just make it a little easier once you start gluing to see those if you like. But again, if you want to hand draw these just to give yourself guidelines, that's okay too. Um, or not draw them at all and just use the creases as your guide. Um, Obviously that's that's good too. So just go ahead and there you go. Now you see I have sectioned off my circle and I have some guidelines to start. Okay, now for the fun part, you're gonna start your design uh, using just a regular white school glue. Um, I'm creating patterns with the glue and then I just lay my beans or pasta on top. Um, there you go, get that glue down there. You don't need too much, but you certainly need enough to really secure the pieces on there. And don't worry about the excess. You can see I've got some coming a bit beyond. It's going to dry transparent if you're just using the basic school glue. Um, so I'm not too worried about the excess. I'd rather have a little bit more so that I make sure that it's really on there when it dries, especially if I'm going to colorize it. Uh, because then you need it to be fairly well stuck on there so it won't move or come off. And I'm just going around the circle just wherever I think it might be interesting to have um, a shape and probably easiest to start from sort of the center out because um, you don't know what kind of space you'll have left by the time you get to the center and you want to make sure that you have room for the 
um, pieces you want. So my recommendation would be to start in the center and, and go out. And like I said, I've used the blue paper because you can, um, you know, once you're done gluing on, that can be it. This is beautiful in itself. You can use wrapping paper. It would be a little harder to see the lines, but um, uh, just for interest, um, uh, you can do pretty much anything you want. Okay, so this one I've done um, with a white background just so that I can show you how you then might go on to stain the pasta or legumes with markers uh, if you choose to to colorize it. So they really absorb and it's much, it is very much like a staining the ink. You'll see with things like the fusilli using a marker, I'm using showing you to use it, that that's only going to get the ridges. You're not actually going to get right in there. So some of them are um, easy to do with a marker and some of them are a little trickier, obviously. You can see you could you could accent the, the piece of pasta, but you're not going to be able to get right down in there. If you're determined to do that and you're um, keen on uh, getting the whole piece, you could use some food coloring. Pasta will really absorb that, uh, and I'll show you that in a minute. For, for another one, you could see on something like the shell, that color's not really... It, it's, um, it's a darker pasta, so it will colorize, and you can get in most of it with the shell. But, better than that, food coloring. Just basic food coloring um, that you may have at home, and use that as a paint, almost like a watercolor, an ink or a dye that will stain the pasta. And like I said, the darker pastas will... Um, the color won't be quite as vibrant. It might go a little darker than you think, but it's really interesting to see what happens. So if you have a little brush and you have some food coloring, you can see there, nice and bright. Oh, got a little bit. The one um, hard part about doing it this way is that that food coloring may um, run down a little bit and stain your paper. Uh, so you have to kind of keep away from the edges. Oh, here my brush is coming off. Um, so the, the further closer down you go to the paper, the likely is that the stain will kind of leak down and may go on your paper. But you can just sort of get a, a sense of how that may look. Okay, so if you think, uh, if you find that process not quite as clean and precise as you'd like, you can always try, as I've done here, um, painting or staining the pasta or beans before you stick them on. Just throw down a piece of um, wax paper, or parchment paper, or something to protect your surface, put the legumes down and just have fun um, painting with a um, food coloring. Uh, and then you, you want to let it dry thoroughly before you um, glue them on because the glue will take in some of that color. Um, so you also don't want to have too much excess glue and you don't want to move the pieces around in the glue too much once they're painted um, because you will find that it will transfer a little bit. So this is just another way to do it. Um, take it that next level entirely up to you. Um, I did find it kind of fun seeing what the pasta would do with the dye and I got some pretty um, fabulous colors that way. There you go. This one I'm starting with small bits in the center, and there you go. Okay, so now you've got your pieces on the circle, you've created your pattern, you've maybe colorized some of the pasta. You don't have to do all of it. I've left some of the spaghetti. You can see there is, I've left its um, original color, it's sort of a golden yellow, so I kind of liked that there. But now I can go in and embellish this however I want. Um, I'm just going to take a marker here and add some more patterning, some interest. Um, this really fun part, I think, too, because um, it's kind of all right there. You're just bringing out a little bit more, adding those final touches to it. You'll see where it touches the glue the marker doesn't want to. But you can see that my glue is dried mostly, so you don't really see it. Um, it dries fairly transparent. Um, 
but you certainly don't have to. Be, this is your piece. You can do whatever you like. You can add um, any little gemstones you might have at home. Um, you can um, leave it the way it was and just have it that way. This is really your piece. Entirely up to you. Just have fun with it. Okay, everyone, that's it. Thanks so much for joining me for our first Latcham Saturday virtual edition. I hope you've really had a lot of fun with this. See, you know, be inspired to see what you can do with some basic materials. You'll probably never look at that pasta aisle the same again in the grocery store. I would love to share your uh, work with everybody. So um, if you want to send that and any comments or feedback you have to me, Jen at programs at latchamartcenter.ca, I would so appreciate it. Thanks again.